tainting the positive qualities of control if they are corrupt within themselves why should they be considered an authority over another society the taking of lung tongue pen uh, demonstrates ambivalence by showing the ease of barbaric domination when you look at these two stories in conjunction with each other you see within the specification of india as are the the figures of alluring exotic and the minatory alien stand out and the one hand as the signs of the sensual temptation impending the exercise of british role and on the other of an unintelligible danger to its hegemony this is the quote and quote the ambivalence laid out here questions this very idea of the temptations of power and the dangers involved in achieving it consequences is a story that demonstrates the corruption within the within the british government in its affairs in india the main character tarian is a man of little work ethic who wants a place any position in the governmental headquarters in shimla he belonged to an regiment but what he really wanted to do was escape from this regiment and live in shimla forever and ever he had no preference for anything in particular beyond a good horse and a nice partner this is the quote right from the start the reader gets a sense of terian's ambivalence as a character he wants a change of position but doesn't care what he changes to the mere act of difference is enough for him knowing he has little available to him at this stage in life terian returns to mrs hoxby to help improve his station i haven't square inch of interest in all of shimla my name is not known to any man with an appointment in his gift and i want an appointment a good son one quote and quote soon after terian meets with mrs hoxby a chain of deceitful events leaves her with a stack of state secret documents in her possession these letters become instantly invaluable to terian's needs of course their things could never be made public because native princes never are officially and their states are officially as well administered as our territories government officials are very careful about their reputations and feel strongly that their personal lives are their own and not to be shared with the public the principle of secrecy was to that viceroy quite as important as the practice and he held that a benevolent despotism like ours should never allow even little things such as appointment of subordinate clerks to leak out till the proper time the court and court terian sees the uh, sees the opportunity he has so he immediately goes to shimla seeking a position with a good salary having no skills just the information in the documents and i fi- fancy that special uh, and i fancy that special knowledge of this can kind is at least as valuable for let us say a birth in the foreign office as a fact of being the nephew of the distinguished officer's wife that hit the strong man hard for the last appointment to the fo- foreign office had been by black favor and he knew it the quote and quote so not only was he given this position in a manner not related to his qualification other positions in foreign office have as well terian saw absolutely nothing wrong with his sac- with his actions in fact he thought if mrs hoxby were 20 years younger and i her husband i should have been viceroy of india in 15 years terian has gotten what he wants with no repercussion this is a lesson for him and anyone else that power in yours whether you earned it or not terian is again demonstrating his ambivalent nature he is completely unfazed with what he uh, with what had to happen in order for him to gain a position in shimla he is unsure of who was affected by his actions and unconcerned consequences clearly demonstrates the corruption The taking of Langton pen is used to highlight process of the uh, process the uh, the British soldiers go through when colonizing a new area. They are given an order and they follow it without asking how it affects others. 
Kipling shows the reader the animal animalistic nature of the soldiers by their senseless brutality and mocks them as they enter the village in nothing more than underwear leaving their kids behind soaked from crossing a river representation which neutralized or elided the challenge to the british world view and which ensures that the positioning master and native is not disturbed close the space for a counter discourse authored by the colonized as historical subject and agent yet in the act of muting these utterances the texts reveal a knowledge of their existence and their danger the quote of kipling the quote of kipling. Of ambivalence, it provides such a place for embracing of self and other. And if you can give me some instances from the story, that will be interesting. Uh, well, I, I think uh, I have quoted a few uh, places. I think uh, <coughs> we can have the paper. The uh, there was Why this. In fact, uh, I'm not really much into the negative side of the ambivalence, but what I said is to, uh, towards the end of it is that finally we have to decide, I mean, what is to be understood from his way of presentation because he was not giving a, a final judgment on as to what he is trying to talk about, as to whether it is good or bad, but he is representing the idea as it is, uh, present in the, those days and those times. So it, it is not that he is basically arguing for one section of society or trying to debunk the, the rulers as well. Because I, as I mentioned in the earlier paragraphs, I said he is also a product of colonized, uh, col colonized uh, the power and also the colonizer who lived in India. So he has both the experiences being a colonized and a colonizer. So I, I think he is maintaining a, a very neutral stand here, but he is not keeping quiet and representing how the things are going on those days. So um, I, I, do you think that it is a really a negative side of presenting a picture as it is? Um, just, we have time now. It's just that while I was reading Albert Mimi, yes. just see, once you are mm. at a place like Rudyard Kipling, both parties have to pay, right? Right. You have to become at that neutral point. You have to take a stand either from the colonized or from the colonizer's point of view. And I believe that here, the sunny aspect of ambivalence is it is only in this territory that you can embrace, you can a culture, you can assimilate the culture. Of right. Culture. That's why somewhere we found him. Uh, in fact, he did, he did have, because many critics have, uh, in an earlier uh, this thing, reviews, if you read, I think uh, there, there was a lot of uh, criticism against uh, uh, Kipling that he's been a masonry, okay, and uh, he was also very, very uh, 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 biased about the imperialistic uh, notion. And yet uh, he was trying to maintain his stand as a writer. But uh, you're right to a certain extent that he is also maintaining certain standards that he didn't mention the oppressor, he didn't talk much about the oppressor. But uh, he was talking much about the oppress, oppre um, sorry, oppressor. He was talking about the oppressed. Uh, he wasn't talking about the oppressed much, but he was talking about the actions of the oppress oppressor in his stories. So uh, it was only kind of an action taking place as it is he was describing, but he is not talking about, uh, since the title is Consequences, he was not really talking about the consequences of the oppressed. The, the consequences faced by the oppressors. Thank you. It extends beyond national and regional boundaries and focuses on literature uh, cultures. It is indicative of its flexibility to adapt new external influences without losing its own individuality. Comparative literature leads to an intellectual renewal of literature and culture and provides a conducive environment for the cultivation of multilingualism. Comparative literature has opened new avenues and led, and led to development of genres, many genres. The centers for innovation traveled the continent of Europe and are now centered in South America. It brought together the works of great novelists like Charles Dickens, Foyda Dostoevsky, and the nuances and expanses of the universal quality of appeal. 
The journeys of short story and drama have gained the maximum. But for the short stories of Antonov Chekhov, the greatest Russian short story writer, and Ge de Maupassant, 19th century French short story writer, and the dramas of modern European playwrights like Brackett and uh, August Strindberg have made a huge progress in these directions. Further, further movements like Theatre of the Absurd and Theatre of Cruelty have brought inconceivable changes to the idea of theatre. These are later reflected in another journal, the movie. At first, they have started as short story, then it has transformed to a drama, next to theatre, and now we are going towards the movie. The convention of carrying forward the development of one form of art to another is distinctly a French and German concept. Hence, movements like cubism, absurdism, and postmodernism would not have taken place if it was not possible. Poets like Apol uh, Apollonia, whose experimental verses reflect the influence of cubism uh, promoted by Pablo Picasso, a Spanish painter, and the works of Pablo Neruda, a half-page short story writer, and Borges, an Argentinian writer, have taken literature to a global heights. Pablo Neruda has bridged the gap between two journals and also extended to more modern modes of entertainment like television and movies. Films by Godard and the works of Salvander Dolly has given a new dimension to postmodern art. Along with generic changes, simultaneously there were ideological influences that have brought societal changes in outlook and lifestyle. Ibsen, the Norwegian playwright, is a great influence on the feminist movement in world literature. Thus, A Doll's House and Stingberg's Miss Julie and Father are instrumental in leading a movement with far-reaching consequences. They are landmark literary works which inspire writers as culturally variant as George Bernard Shah, Badal Sirkar, and Mohan Rakesh. Comparative literature has uh, overcome the minor problems of language disparities out of translation. A translation gains greater acceptance in plot, theme, and characterization became the major concern of reader ahead of language. It is a very heartening development that writers like Joseph Canrod, an English Polish novelist, R.K. Narayan, V.S. Naipal, best known writer of post colonial themes, and Georgi Kosinski, award, uh, award winning Polish American novelist whose mother tongue is not uh, English, but the role of, I'm sorry, have been accepted as classics. The common reader who gives more importance to plot, theme, characterization, etc., has gained immensely by this. The famous essay by Somerset Maugham, The Ten Greatest Novels of World Literature, is landmark work and has expanded and enriched the vision and ready experience of many a common reader. Thus, comparative literature is not merely geographical and social distances, but it creates a lively, universal feel of human emotions. Pablo Nerodo, Neroda is one such example of supreme reach among readers across the continent. Thank you. Questions? Divergences and divergences. Uh, this topic about two different poets from two different cultures. One from one is an Arab, and the second is uh, English American poet. That is T. S. Eliot and Badr Shakir Sayab. Uh, these two poets uh, belong to uh, divergent cultures and ideologies. Asayab was a communist, while T.S. Eliot, uh, as um, criticized by some writers, as imperialist, because he supported um, uh, English or British uh, empire in uh, a lot of his uh, poems, especially uh, the Westland. And in other verses, he said, England and nowhere. <coughs> Unlike uh, uh, Eliot, Asayab was against imperialism, and he resisted the Western hegemony and addresses uh, in, 19, in 1956. Asayab said that, uh, states that the role of rit literature is to support the process of decolonization. He argues that the task of 
great literature is to, is to portray the conflict between evil represented by coloni colonialism and human who struggles for freedom. Uh, point, points of convergence and departure between Asayab and Eliot will be approached, uh, will be approached from literary perspective. Asayab and Eliot are modernist poets. Both are modernist poets and share uh, the same view of the cultural, cultural heritage. Here I'll try to uh, find out the similarities between the two points or the points of convergence is the, number one, their view on tradition. Asayab and Eliot do not reject cultural her heritage. They assert the link between the past and present. I, I can't uh, uh, quote what they said or what they say about the um, tradition because uh, it takes time. I'll try just to uh, indicate their attitude or their view on tradition. Both they assert the link between the past and they, uh, for example, Asayab uh, Eliot emphasized on his uh, on the necessity of the of a positive relation between modern uh, and traditional heritage. The second uh, point is uh, element of impersonality or poet's concealment. That means the presence of the poet in his poem. Um, as we know that uh, Eliot uh, theorized for the impersonality, that the, he, he means that uh, the poet should, uh, the, the should not uh, be cleared uh, present in his poems. While Asayab was, was not like that, he was, uh, he, he, uh, he, all his poems was personal. However, uh, T.S. Eliot, according to some uh, critics, uh, couldn't escape from uh, impersonality. Uh, the third point is uh, intertextuality. Uh, both Asayab and Eliot, they use the, the technique of te intertextuality. Uh, and another point is that there, there is intertextuality between Asayab and Eliot. And I, I, I brought here many examples. Uh, for one of uh, examples is this verse. Uh, Eliot said in one of his poems, the love song of, G of uh, Alfred Brofrock, I have measured out my life with coffee, uh, with coffee spoons. Similarly, Asayab says, and I measure my hours with cups. I brought here uh, many examples, but the, the time is limited.